Welcome to Wika. Today we're going to wire up a three gang box containing a three way and two single pull switches, residential trim. Usually when you're doing a trim stage, you're trimming an entire house or a building. So what someone usually does, they'll go and lay these out. They'll pull the wires out and they'll lay out the type of switch that goes on each of the different switches. Double check that it's correct before you install them. So in this case, there's a three-way, there's three wires here. This is a three-way switch. It contains a common. And these are single pull switches that have just two terminals. Now, the first thing we're going to do that's uh, a bit different is, is we're going to not use these terminals, uh, but we're going to use the stab in. Uh, residentially, usually they use the stab in. Sometimes you'll use the terminals, but we're going to show a typical residential installation. Now on these stab ins, there's always a guide in the back of a switch to show how far you strip the wire. In this case, it's right here in the back of this switch. This switch also has the same thing, and they're about the same length. The little guide for showing how far to strip the conductor. So what we'll do here is we'll take this first switch here, and we're going to strip these about the length that we need to. They're a little long, so I'm going to cut them a little shorter and then we're going to strip these. This is number 14 wire, so we can stab in. Remember, if it's number 12 wire, you're not allowed to use the stab ins. It's only 14 and below for stab ins. Okay, so of course there's no stab in for the ground. The ground wire has to be curled around, so we're going to take our strippers, use the hole in the top, and we're going to make a little curl just like that. And then we're going to find the ground conductor. Here it is, the ground terminal and the conductor right here we're going to put it together and then we're going to use a drill now i'll caution you you have to use a drill for speed but you want to make sure that it's on the first speed and you also want to make sure that you don't have it on drill mode set it to where it won't overdo something it'll hear that it'll click before it over tightens the uh, terminal the biggest thing and mistake people make when they start out is they over tighten and they strip out the terminal so be careful here we go we're going to tighten it up here and it's tight it's not going anywhere you didn't over tighten it it's perfect now this is a three-way switch if you look at the back of this switch what you'll see is you'll see two brass terminals those are for the travelers and then there's the black common terminal if you look at this the, the makeup here you're going to look at it and you're like okay the travelers are here because this wire has been wrapped around and you can see that it's got a little extra twist. This is definitely the common wire. So what we'll do first is here's the terminal here. We'll put one of the travelers and push it in the back just like that. And then here is the other traveler. It's brass. We'll push it right in the back. And then here is the black common. Make sure you get this right. This is the biggest mistake people can make when wiring a three-way switch. You gotta make sure the common is in the right place and the traveler's in the right place. So now all you have to do is you take this switch, and again, on a three-way switch, there's really no top or bottom. You can go either direction, but most commonly the ground is to the bottom left. Bottom left is the, the usual place. Push back that ground wire way back in the box so it doesn't interfere with any of the other terminals. You don't want your ground wire to touch any terminal because then that could cause a dead short or uh, just not a good thing here. Okay, so next, let's do the next switch, a single pull switch. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut these to length. Again, we have this for the ground terminal. We'll have to take this and turn it. And then we're going to strip these to length, the stab in the back. Here we go. Here's one. And here's two. Perfect. We'll take this, there's the ground conductor, it's green. That's an easy one to remember, the green one is always the ground. <laughs> and then we're gonna tighten this right on there, being very careful to not over tighten and strip the screw out. Then it doesn't matter which one of these goes in which. You just gotta make sure one goes in the top, push in, one goes in the bottom, push in, just like that. And as you can see, there's not really any wire showing, it's done the right length, right? Now we look at this, and the switch will always say top. This is, says off. Obviously, off is down. So we're going to push this right in here like this. And that's it. Making sure the ground wire 
is pushed way in back. You don't want that ground wire to touch any of those terminals. That's going to be a bad thing. All right, now we have the third switch. It's a single pole switch. We're going to take this. We're going to cut these. And we're going to make the loop for the ground. And we're going to strip the two hot conductors to the right length, right like this. And here we go. Again, ground terminal is easy to find. We're going to put this ground terminal on here. We're going to tighten it. Use our drill and carefully tighten it up. You'll get better at this uh, and faster at using the drill, but at first you've got to be real careful. Then what we'll do is we'll put the stab ins, doesn't matter which is which, just like that. And again, this is, says on and off. Got to make sure. What, the biggest mistake <laughs> some new people make is they've got the, it upside down, so It'll turn on when it's in this position. That's not a good thing. All right, so we push that ground wire way back so it doesn't interfere. And now let's screw these on. You also have to be care careful when you're screwing each one of these in that you don't over tighten. This is a plastic box and it's really easy to strip the uh, box out if you're too, too uh, fast, uh, too much pressure. You wanna make sure you get in there and tighten it up. So what you'll find, these plastic boxes move around a little bit. You may tighten this first switch up, but by the time you get to the third switch, the box is pulled out of the wall more. So you'll have to go back and tighten each one. Okay. And finally this here, you'll find that this box pulls out of the wall a bit. It's nailed in, it won't go anywhere, but there's some flex. All right. So here we go, we'll tighten that up nice. There we go, making sure it makes contact with the sheetrock. And we gotta make sure it's tight enough to where nothing's moving around. See how that it shakes around? That's not moving. Oh, there we go. Now the plate will tighten it up a little bit more, but you've gotta make sure that these aren't gonna move around on you. See, it, it just kind of does that. So the box is a little flexible. A little more tricky. All right, now this one loosened up a bit. There we go. Tight, tight, tight. And then it's ready for the plate. Now this is a typical example of a three gang switch box containing a three way and two single pull switches, a residential trim.